is finally time to, for some reason, rip apart the Bronco again and rebuild it. I decided before I get too far into this to sit down and kind of explain what the hell is going through my mind and what we're planning and doing with the Bronco. So last winter, I found a really good deal on some 2011 F250 axles and kind of knew that I wanted to go the solid axle route with it. And so I picked those up. I've literally just had them sitting for a year since then. Finally, now it's time to tear this thing apart, completely take out the twin I-beam suspension that's in it, put some solid axles under it, make it big, do some custom fab work, and just kind of build it into what I want it to be. If you guys didn't know, we did a three or four part build series last winter when we LS swapped this thing after I brought it home from California and it kind of blew up on me. So the LS is in there, we did that all last year. We're doing something we've kind of never gotten into before and that's getting into the, the super custom side of things. I'm researching things I don't even know to try and figure out what suspension I need to run. We've got some cool partners on board as well. I've got Versatires 39, 15 and a half R26 MXT tires coming in. So this thing's gonna be needing to sit pretty big to fit those 39s. I'm looking and kind of hoping for around 12 inches of lift. Doing coilovers up front, airbags in the rear, that way I can still squat it and make everybody mad because I kind of didn't mind my black Bronco that squatted. I wanna have that ability, but I don't want it perma squatting. So that's what we're kind of looking at doing. Gonna need a custom cradle made gonna go full four link obviously to accomplish all of this and that's the goal so when it all comes together it should be pretty sweet um, but we're starting now I'm gonna be tearing apart the stock suspension with the six inch super lift that's in the Bronco and get into doing some measurements for the four link system rusty. let's go it's not rusty. It's, rusty it's not rusty there's not a speck of rust on that thing turn off the camera stop filming Okay, so rear suspension is gone. Uh, I've got a bracket here that's riveted on, of course, and there's one right there as well. So I'm gonna have to have bankers help to get those drilled out. There's a couple bolts and a couple rivets on them, so uh, those need to come out, just this and this. Other than that, the rear suspension is out. Now tomorrow is the weekend, but I am coming in to take all of this out. So front suspension's tomorrow, let's go. Suspension is fully out. Uh, obviously, there's some disconnect we gotta do here. Zero more minutes. We done, baby. Let's go. Got some brackets I gotta take out still, but for the most part, everything's pretty much done. It's a Saturday night at like 8 o'clock that night. Uh, no sleep over here because we got shit to do. So, suspension's out. Now, time to kind of tidy up the frame, clean it up a little bit, and then we'll get going on measuring some four link stuff. But more or less, suspension's out. This. Run and roll is what will be going in. There's a rear axle, there's a front axle, there's some gears, uh, and here's a Bronco with absolutely no suspension under it. Nope, that's all you get to see. Um, and go from there for brackets, four link bars, lots of stuff. The fun's just beginning. All right guys, so we got the frame basically bare right now. We also wire wheeled it, I wire wheeled it. So it's literally completely bare. Gonna be painting that. So that's gonna take a little bit of prep work. Got all the rivets out for basically every single bracket that we have under this thing. In addition to that, got like all the brakes off, all the old radius arms off, everything off of the axles. So they're kind of stripped-ish. Have a little bit more to go. These are going to be the radius arm brackets that I'm using for the front of my four link. Really what these are for, um, basically I have two options. On the stock axle, I can either cut off the brackets that are there, which is a lot of work because it works into the diff and just gets really messy. Otherwise I can use these. These bolt right up exactly to where the brackets were for the radius arms on the axles. And then from here, I can weld tubing into it. And then that'll go right into my four link, which on the other side will have a heim joint, which will go to my cradle. And that's kind of the front end. So these are kind of the first piece to the front end as far as the linkage goes. Okay, so these are the fronts. And they're fire. I went with the anodized uh, aluminum just because I'm basically going white and chrome with everything. There's your fronts then. Uh, they come with pads already. I think I'm gonna upgrade them though and go with the ceramic pad because these are a semi-metallic, which will have a little bit more dust. Ceramics will have a little bit less dust, which will just be easier with polish wheels to keep them clean. There's the fronts. 
super sick. They have all the existing holes for mounting and everything like that, so they'll go on super easy. And then these are the rears. The rears are a three pot instead of a six pot. Just something to do with the technology and design behind these specific axles. You can see the three pistons right here, but that's uh, what you're dealing with for the rear. Uh, got a long way to go, obviously, but it's another step in the right direction. Here are my rotors. I went with slotted rotors, uh, obviously EBC brakes. Um, these are black and I think once they actually start driving, they'll kind of wear in a little bit so this won't be black all the time. To pair with my SSBC calipers, got EBC brakes, and then I also upgraded my brake pads as well, which I think are what's in this little box. So open that up next. But the reason I wanted to upgrade was the semi-metallic ones that came with SSPCs are not something that I want to run just due to the fact that there's a lot of dust there. So these are the, the green stuff is what it's called. So the green brakes, which are basically low dust and gonna provide the least amount of dust possible just because with polished wheels, it's gonna be a nightmare to keep clean. And I want to make it as easy on myself as possible because I don't keep up on cleaning stuff sometimes. Green stuff, 6000 series, brake improvement. Huge shout out to EBC Brakes. Um, if you're actually looking for them, we carry them on custom offsets. You can check them out under the performance section. So if you're looking to upgrade your brakes, obviously it's always a good thing to do. If you're lifting your truck, putting aftermarket wheels and tires on and going bigger, the more rolling mass you have, the more you need to stop and the quicker you need to stop. So I decided to do a weight comparison because these bad boys are clearly aluminum, right? Full front brake versus these are what I had up there. Uh, the SSBCs weigh in at 11 pounds, 11 ounces. The stock calipers weighed in at 25 pounds, 13 ounces. So there's like a whole ton of math involved, but it's like 14 pounds, two ounces difference there between these and these. Like literally these weigh over double, the stock ones do what the SSBCs weighed in at. So that is kind of mind blowing in itself, kind of unboxing these and realizing how light they are compared to factory. And obviously they look way better and they're gonna perform way better too. So it's like quadruple the benefits to stock. All right guys, so we're finally in the process of getting the Bronco a little bit closer to completion. Um, basically what we're working on now is working with uh, Nick with Backyard Fab. He's actually gonna help create the cradle that we're gonna have. I gotta figure out measurements as to where it's gonna be placed. We know it's gonna be two feet. So I gotta basically figure that out. And then there's a little bit of a dip to the frame too. It's not uneven, it's just how the frame goes. So. I have to figure out where to place it and then what that's going to look like for the um, the top piece of the cradle to bolt onto the frame then. So that's kind of what we're going to do right now. Here, down, 37. Here, down, woo! Oh, whatever, 36. Okay. So that's where the cradle is going to be. So will I not have a parking brake with the new axles? I mean, probably not. Do you need a parking brake? It's an automatic. I, I don't think so. Uh, you gotta park. You gonna park on the hill a lot? Well, the problem is there's a dip here too that you gotta take into consideration, but. Yeah, we'll cut that out. Cut her straight across. <laughs> Again, should have brought it down to the frame. I'm gonna need to borrow Brad's air hammer to knock this out for the parking brake, so I'm not gonna need that anymore, or this. And then I can move the whole cradle back to start here and end about there and that'll give me my two feet and also be more centered underneath the truck. So we'll wait to say what the pros say and go from there. Um, so yeah, based on, based on the pictures that you sent me about the, the cradle placement, um, if you're going to push it that far forward, I would say with having your wheelbase be so short, I would probably center it in the wheelbase. Okay. I, I would just aesthetically it's just it's gonna look the best and having the front links 15 inches shorter than the rear you know give or take a little bit yep um or whatever you said is and it's gonna look way better to actually center them okay um because you know you're gonna be able to see quite a bit of that difference now it doesn't mean that you can't like you know weld those holes shut or whatever i don't and, know how far you uh -huh. i would place it in the center of the wheelbase okay that's the best thing to do so aesthetically you want it to sit straight with the body right yep. so like in a circumstance like that i would take like a four foot long level right I would put the angle finder on the level, put it against the bottom of the body, you know, the rocker right there. Yep. Then you zero out the angle finder, and then you can put the level on the bottom of the frame, and you can set it on either, like, jacks, or you can put it on, like, transmission jacks, or whatever. And then you can pull measurements off of the frame. It's because we're going to need the backside of the cradle to actually be shaped like, like the frame is right there. Yep. You know, because we want that cradle to sit level. 
So it's, it's a little bit of work on your end and getting the measurements right. Um, but, you know, I have no, no doubt in my mind you'll be able to do it. All right, guys, so we're actually, I'm on my way back from vacation right now, but we had to make a pit stop and pick up some parts from Nick at Backyard Fab. So we're here at his place right now, grabbing the parts for the Bronco. We got the cradle, we got the rear bag mounts. So this is gonna be your axle side track bar mount. Other random little pieces and brackets and stuff. So we'll kind of check it out and say hi to Nick. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, no. oh. <laughs> so originally I put these openings on the inside. So you'd be able to get in there to get a bolt to them. So oh, okay. as long as they're not too far out that you can't get anything yep. in there. This is where the center was. So I went off his measurements. So your yep. bag mount will be centered. So that's like the width of the bag mount right there, those two lines. Okay. And then the track bar mount, I pictured going behind it, which is this. Yep. This goes on the driver's side, because see how it's solid? I yep. went ahead and just made it solid, just for some extra structure. Okay. And then this is what faces it. Yep. Oh, so kind of. See what I'm yes. saying? So they're both yes. solid, just that for makes some sense. extra structure. So yeah, it'll work out perfect. We got some work. <laughs> oh, it is. It, no, it's work, but it's. I tell you what, it's it's fun. It'll be. Doing yeah. These things is fun. Pretty much have a game plan figured out what we're doing with the parts. Packed them into the car. Barely. They're all in here though. And uh, so now we get to head back home. And then starting tomorrow, start to figure out where they all go in the truck. I'm really excited to get the cradle mocked up with the frame because I think that's gonna kinda of start giving it the, the look and the feel. But there's a lot of work ahead of us, so we're just getting started. See, that's pretty sick. There's some like residue on there that just needs to get like buffed out, but. That's dope, you did the CL logo yeah. in there. Put it in there and make sure it fits. I don't know what side it goes on. Oh, they're not even labeled? Oh, I can't hold this thing up there. It's heavy. That needs to come off. Where's your rear mounts? I'm getting there. You got too excited and had me hold the cradle up. Oh, where does this go? That's Bailey's. <laughs> does this go here? I'm not really sure where this is supposed to fit underneath the truck. It's a little weird. It sounds broken. <laughs> oh, is this the rear track bar upper mount? Yeah, the flat parts go next to each other. Just like that, yeah. I got you. So that plate, we can weld the upper track bar mount to and that'll bolt right over here, and then I can powder coat it. That way I don't have as much black. Like I'll have more white underneath the truck then. Does it look good? It fits pretty well. Oh shit, yeah. yeah. He literally told me yesterday, he's like, yeah, I mean, you're not going really big at all with it, so. He's used to 26 inches of lift on his trucks that he's building, so like, this thing having 12 inches, he was like, that ain't nothing. It's pretty dope, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna do some sketchy shit. Do da, do da. Hope I get away with it. Do da, do da, day. And this might be okay, actually. I'm gonna step away. Don't do this at home, kids. Oh my god. What? Huh? All right, so that'll be it for today. Basically got the lines all drawn up for where the holes are gonna be for the cradle, so I can come in next week and drill those out. And then also do the other side. Uh, this bracket from the parking brake was a bigger pain in the butt than I thought. Also helps have the right tools. Cradle got mocked up, a little bit sketchy, but still was there. Uh, got all my holes here I need to drill, so I can come back and do that, and we can keep going. Time to do some sketchy shit. I'm heading right now to meet up with Cody from KH Metalworks. He has the grill done for the Bronco. Damn. He cut out and had everything powder coated for it, so I'm going to pick it up now. Um, it's a new custom grill for the Bronco. Should be pretty dope. Should be, oh, yeah. should be pretty nice. Yeah, that's dope. All right, you ready for this? Backyard Fab made these based off of literally this that Banker made for him. So what I want to do first is line this up with the frame. Make sure it's like center top to bottom too, along with obviously the curvature. Make a mark at the edge, and then I'm gonna measure both sides just to make sure that they're both obviously in the same spot. Um, and then I can start drilling holes to get this bolted up and go from there. Okay, now we can do some measuring. Uh, 25 and 3 8. Okay, other side. Okay, now let's measure that, and then we'll have to figure out what needs to move where to. This one's 24 and 3 quarters, <laughs> or 3 eighths. Okay, these are lined up. Well, that one over there is lined up, right? We're gonna go... Uh, okay, let's hold this one up and draw some holes. Holes! 
Why do you keep thinking this has four holes? Well, do you think a half inch will go right away or should I do a pilot hole first? Pilot you should hole. do a pilot hole. Yeah, so I gotta do them all twice. But I got one, two, three, four, six, 12, 24 times I gotta drill through. This was literally the last one, too. Really? Yep. They were out, and then they found this one as like a, it must have been a display, the boxes open and stuff, but it was like brand new in there. Yeah. It was the last one. I got lucky. There's only two modes, mm -hmm. forward and backward. Start even smaller, you think? Damn! You see the flat spots end and then it gets rounded. If you go too far, you're on the rounded part and it's in there and you go and then it doesn't spin straight. Oh, it's still not spinning straight. That's not good. It definitely wow. looks bent, doesn't it? Yeah, you can see it's bent. Oh boy. No. I bent a bit. Can I get a new one? You bent it? Well, it's a quarter yeah. inch bit, not an half inch bit. How did you manage that? Uh, cheap bits, thick frame. Strong like bull. Check the, there's a blue thing in that new toolbox. Whack. Got one left, and then we're pretty much all the way through all of them. Then I'll put the bolts through, make sure they all kind of line up good. If I have to kind of wobble the holes a little bit more, we can. Okay, so maybe I spoke too soon. I literally blasted that one just fine. Blasted this one just fine. Get to the last one and it's like, nah fam, we're done for the day. Was Banker right? It turns out Banker might have been right. You got that. I was using a quarter drill. I think the bit's going out. Cause I got to here, I had three left, one, two, three. And it was just not moving anywhere. And I grabbed a new drill bit, of course it's a different chuck size. So I had to grab a powered, battery powered drill instead of the quarter drill then. Oh yeah, she's, she's dickered, bud. <laughs> that is really <laughs> I don't even have to touch that one. It's always how it goes. You get to the last like couple holes, like two, three tops, and you have to go buy another drill bit. Welcome to building trucks. Day two, got a new bit. It's six times stronger than the other one, so it'll work really good for the one quarter of a hole I have left to go through. We got one more hole to drill here, and then I'm gonna start working on the transmission cross member and holding the transmission up so I can take that cross member off. So I can line up the holes on this side to drill out. Should be a good time. Jesus. Holy shit. I'm just here getting sponsorships. Oh God. Good morning. How you doing? That looks a lot further than it was last night. Holy shit. Yeah, we left the, we got the hotel at three. At three? Yeah. Damn. We do gotta go over a couple things with you. Oh Stuff God. Okay. Yeah, um, just so you can actually drive it. We can't do anything with the track bar. You need a mini cradle. Really? Yeah, so the mini okay. cradle from ROD, I already texted him, but he makes a mini cradle that actually comes off the top of this. So you completely delete your ball joint all together right here. Okay. And it comes off the top and like drops down and it goes to about right here. If we do that and then have a drop bracket, I don't know that that's going to work. Okay. If not, he makes them. Yep. But you know, drop farther here, up higher here, the bar is not as bad. Yep. You need a sway bar. You don't mm. have a sway bar set up. At all? No. Okay. So you need a factory 05 plus Super Duty sway bar. Okay. Brackets that are going to go here that drop down. And then the front's done. Like if we had that stuff right now, we Jesus could drop Christ. it on the ground. <laughs> yeah. And then the back stuff too. Um, we found two other things that are unsafe. You got no support going between these. You know, literally just need two ear tabs. Just two little tabs with holes in them. A bar that goes across with two heims in it. That's oh. It. Again, there's no cross member. Yep. No cross member so your frame doesn't separate and pull apart with all the pressure oh, going up and down. Oh, Jesus. We got plenty of tubing. I'm gonna take tubing, round bar, cut yep. it, run it from inside to inside. I'm literally gonna hard weld up your frame so your frame can't spread. Okay. Then you're done. Damn. Yeah, so that's where we're at with it. <laughs> and then drill the hole up through the 
frame. Because then you can still get your. You're Oh, I see. You can't you just slid it all the way back. Off. No, it's right into the damn. It's into this plate right here. So this plate? Yeah. Oh, damn it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, obviously, that's, that's fully aired up. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Southern Style has been busting their balls working on the Bronco. They're back doing it again. They came up day after Christmas. I think it's fairly close, but I'm heading to the shop now to check out where they're at with it. Hopefully it should be by the end of today on the ground under its own weight, which is super exciting. So. We also got the uh, 39, 15 and a half, 26 Versa tires on there. Um, the wheels are just, the, those are not my final wheels. I want to do chrome or forged. I want to do 16 wides, but those tires are the tires. Once it's on the ground, it will be sitting as high as it's going to be sitting. Obviously it won't be powder coated, won't have the, the width that I want, but it should be pretty tall. So super excited to see what that looks like. Uh, let's go check it out. Good morning. What's up? Oh shit. Morning. Looks like a truck again. Getting there, Jared. Yeah, this is crazy. And then this is ride height, then. This should be ride height. Yeah, this is ride height. We're gonna put the back wheels and tires on there. We're gonna pull the other bars out and then finish welding them out. Mm -hmm. And then put air in your bags. Mm -hmm. Then the, the back's done. Oh. We'll tighten everything up. Yep. Put the tires on it, and then we'll drop it down on the ground. Okay. And then that way we're just fighting with the front. Okay. There's that swing grip. <laughs> Go. Ready? Yep. So we're just gonna have to jack the truck up and get the stands off under. It's basically where we're at with it. Oh damn! Because you've got 50 psi in them. Oh, that's plenty. There's a lot of. I mean, they look solid. <laughs> Is that far enough, or need more? Shift. There you go. Perfectly. Okay. Come back. Oh okay. my god. This is my least favorite part of this whole thing. You ready, kids? Yeah. <laughs> Filter down. There. there you go. So that is where we put it up on the stands. Yeah. And that is ride height. <laughs> You're kicked out a little bit, but I'm not happy about it. I have enough lean, so let me just. Oh my god. Monster truck, buddy. <laughs> yeah, just air dump air all the air right out of the bag. Yeah. Oh yeah, dump it. Damn. <laughs> okay, it's good before my track bar punctures my gas tank. Oh, look at that bag, though. Holy yikes. It's like, like right there. Here, hang on, I got it. Let me do the test. Oh yeah, they're even. Dude, she looks nasty from the back. Yeah. Uh-oh. He's got other level. Oh my god. Way. The bitch is an inch and a half, yeah. In the rear? Yeah. Here's B. <laughs> <laughs> First word. <laughs> oh god. Whoa. 